Hey guys, I'm Electro Welder 2002, and this is the shop. We finally got out here, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy. I finally got out of here, guys. After a long delay of me promising to finally come out here, we finally did. And look at all of this stuff. I haven't been out here for at least a month or so, so uh, just give you a quick little overview of all the stuff that's in here, because I really want to get to showing you what all this is right here that you probably are wondering. What the heck is that? I'll show you. Um, just our old oxygen propane acetylene slash thing here. Used to be really useful until I ran out of oxygen and I lost the hose to this because it was pretty much weather eaten. So I threw it all the way and all the scraps are left here. You can obviously see. And our old striker. I don't even know if this thing still works. Oh, it does a little bit. Just a whole bunch of sprays, lubricants, old brushes, battery terminals, oil, Vice grips for some reason around that wall. Um, belt sander, you can probably guess what that is. Jigsaw belt sander. All these good stuff. A tractor that we're hopefully going to restore sometime in the future. And a good old fashioned uh, wedding, housing, something. I don't know. I know it's an AC though. And our old welding mask. So today we're going to go over an Electra. This is just for arc welding, no other type, no other method of welding. This does not, this or d tutorial does not go over tungsten inert gas or TIG welding, and it doesn't go over MIG welding. This just goes over the basics of arc welding. So, before you understand your welder, you want to understand your electro, because if you just jump right onto that and think you know what you're doing with this, it's not a really smart idea to do. So, what I wanted to show for you guys today was an electro. This right here, my friends, is an electrode in our electrode holder or cable or whatever you want to call it. Pretty basic. Um, what you basically do is you see this little handle right here? You just, when you're done welding, you just drop your electrode like that. Like that, like so. Alright, this metal piece right here, the bare end metal right here, goes into our electrode. As you can see, it goes into our electrode, not the flux coated end or our brown or white coated end. It does not go in there, or else you'll have some pretty bad, pretty bad smoke. And I don't think it's just not a good idea. So you put your metal in like that, and then you think you just go well, who like that? Well, no. Let's understand our electrode. Our electrode is just a metal rod that's been coated with a special flux. They also have the name of what the electrode is is 6013 which is what our box says right here, 6013. The E stands for electrode, nothing special, just says means electrode, an abbreviation. The 60 right here stands for 60,000 pounds of tensile strength. And this right here stands for amperages and different types of things of this electrode. You can look that up on the interweb to find out more if I have missed anything whatsoever. And it gives you warnings and stuff on the boxes. They come in big pounds of boxes or in little boxes like this. So, this is our basic electrode. There are other ones out there, such as 7018, 7024, 6011, 6010, all those good electrodes. I wrote down notes here if you are interested in those. I won't read them off. Um, 6011, AC or DC, positive or negative, and that's the same for all of them, the good and the bad. 7018... You can read all that if you wish to. Pause the video and read them just to get a specification about them. And uh, there are some backsides on them, I believe. So, I hope you guys could read those notes. Pause the video if you needed to. And, uh, well, just strike an arc once you've understood why the flux is there. The flux is to protect your weld so it's not brittle, like this cutting wheel that I broke up here, just to give an example. If you break this flux off, I'll take an old electrode of mine, just so you guys don't ruin something that you really need to get done. 7018, by the way, just a little side note, 70 stands for 70,000 pounds of pressure. So it's pretty much the same concepts as, six, as the 60 and 6013, only it's a 70. It can take more tensile strength, meaning pounds of pressure that you bang on it with a hammer or uh, machine it in some kind of press, some kind of hydraulic press. But other than that, I'll show you what an electrode looks like. 
when all the flux is broken off. You should not do this if you're going to be welding something together with this electrode. That's why I use a used electrode or a really dead electrode. Also, a handy hint, don't use an electrode that's over, that's been out of the box in air for about two months. Don't use an electrode like that. You can still, but I don't advise that you do. So what I'm going to do here is put it on the anvil. Okay, that's what it looks like. Metal, fluxed. Metal, fluxed. Some of the flux is still on there, but that's pretty much bare metal as it is, and that's the flux core. You don't want to strike metal on, or else you're not going to be welding, you're just going to be striking a whole bunch of black dots all over your metal piece, and I don't think you want that, because every welder usually wants a nice clean weld. They don't want a whole bunch of black dots everywhere, and molten puddles here and there, and slag here, and it just goes on and on. So, Here's another way of telling if your weld is strong. If you remove the flux and you try to weld or your electrode's bad because it's been sitting out for two or more months in the air, if it's in its container, container, uh, sorry, the Pepsi hasn't kicked in yet. Um, <laughs> oh, man. You don't want an electrode that's been sitting out for too long in the air. If it has, you better throw it away because it's not a good electrode. If you try to weld with it, chances are you might get lucky and it'll be still worthy of being a welding electrode. But chances are it'll produce a weld that's this brittle. There's our broken piece down here. That's how brittle your weld will be. Easy to snap, and I don't think you want something... You don't want something that's that brittle. Especially if you're welding something that's really important. If you're a professional welder and you're trying to weld like a car axle or something really extremely important, you don't want to do that. If you own your own business and you do that for people or you just do it for a family member in general, you could put everyone's lives at stake. Don't do that. Always go out and buy new electrodes. They're cheap, and arc welding is one of the cheapest um, welding methods that I know of out there. It's the cheapest. All you need to do is buy the machine which is costs half of what a MIG welder costs, no gas required, and the electrodes are like two to three bucks, and maybe 30 bucks for a big pound box of whatever electrode that you want to weld with. Now to strike an arc, you want to do something along these lines. Let me try to get it off. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. To strike an arc, first, we have, first thing that we have to do is put it in our electrode holder. So, to put in our electrode holder, you simply open it like this, and you see those teeth that are in there? Make sure your welder's not on while you're trying to do this. Turn it on after you insert the electrode. You turn it on. Here's the bare metal end right here, not the flux. You don't put the flux end in, you put the bare metal end in. They come this way in the box, and you put them into those teeth. And you clamp down on it, make sure it's in there pretty strong, and then away you can just start welding. Now, to start an arc, I'm not going to really be starting one because our welder is off. This is just a way, a method of showing how you would start an arc. Now, I'm going to get a bare piece of metal that is down here if I can find one. Um, here we go. Remember, don't turn your welder on during this. Now, with all metals, if it's rusty, Grind it off or use a flat disc on an angle grinder to remove the rust before you weld because rust, if you weld with rust on, it can be very hazardous to your health, such as welding with galvanized and gold-plated steel. Don't weld on those. They're highly toxic and they can kill you. Always wear a 3M respirator. You can buy them at Sears or Home Depot or wherever it happens to be. Almost always wear gloves and your welding helmet. Make sure it's a shade 10 or shade 8, green or gold colored lens. And uh, you can also buy auto darkening. You can look those up if you wish to, because I'm not going over those today. You strike an arc doing this. You can either strike it like this. Remember to grind or flat disc your metal nice and shiny. Kind of what the color of this anvil is, or the color of the teeth on my bench vise over here. Or that bolt, whatever. You strike it like this. You can either tap it, like this, like you're 
gently tapping a hammer like this. But you remember, you don't just, and then you pull away. Don't do that. You want to just gently strike it and then stay with your metal and hover above it. You look how far I'm hovering above my metal. Not very far. You don't want to go too far, or else your weld will be down and you won't have an arc anymore. If you go way too close and you're right on the metal, your electro will get stuck, and you can't get it off until you release it from the electro holder with this handy dandy little lever thing right here. So, that's one method of trying to strike it, is just tapping it like a hammer. Not like tap, a really light tap, like tick, tick, tick. Another method is striking it like a match. Like that. You strike it and then you go right back to your metal and do the exact same thing that you do with uh, the tap method. There's the tap method and there's the match method. Those are the two methods that are most commonly used is, is the tap and the match. Make sure when you use the match you always go right back to where you started slowly. Not too fast or else you'll lose your arc. You have to go moderately fast but slow like this you hit the metal and then you go right back to it some along those lines you can go ahead and try this out guys and uh, thanks for viewing another one of my fantastically made awesome videos um, I hope to overview on this welder go over it and thank you very much guys see y'all on my channel right back